everyone, welcome to the second video on how to add up or horizontally summate individual demand curves. This video is all about the algebraic representation of the market demand curve that we drew diagrammatically in the last video when I added up Mark and Ben's demand curves here. And if you guys remember from the last video, we constructed the market demand curve by horizontally summating the individual demand curves at each price. And we ended up with this kink here because our two individuals in the market, Mark and Ben, had different price axis intercepts. When I'm writing out the algebraic representation of the curves then, what I need to make sure of is that I describe this market demand uh, with this kink here adequately. So let's make some room here. Good. All right, so let's start by introducing a simple algebraic representation of this lower half of the market demand curve. And let's just say that market demand, that's a big Q, can be described in this region as the quantity demanded by Mark, that is Q subscript M, plus the quantity demanded by Ben, that's Q subscript B. This is true, if you remember from the last video, because when the prices were above five, Ben stops demanding. So it's only in this region, this lower region for prices below five, that the market demand curve is described by Mark's demand plus Ben's demand. The upper half of the curve can be described simply as big Q, that's market demand, is equal to Q subscript M, since the market demand is identical to Mark's individual demand curve in this region. And so those are going to be our market demand equations, but we need to fill them out a little bit more. And just as a side note, you may notice, if you are coming from the last video, that I have introduced the subscripts on the quantity variables within each individual's demand expression. This is just so we can distinguish between the quantity demanded by Mark, Q subscript M, and the quantity demanded by Ben, Q subscript B, so then we can add them up. I actually should have had these subscripts in in the first video, that would have been more correct, so that's completely my bad, but I think you guys are clever enough to figure, figure this out. And so actually all we need to do in order to fill out our market demand equations we have here is to manipulate the expression of our individual demand curves for Mark and Ben to be in terms of these quantity variables. And then we're just going to substitute them into our market demand equations that we have here. So Mark's demand is currently described as P is equal to 10 minus 5Q. I want this in terms of Q subscript M. So first I take away 10 from both sides I then divide both sides by negative five and I get Q subscript M is equal to two minus P over five. We can do the same thing for Ben. So Ben's demand curve is just P is equal to five minus Q subscript B. So I'll take away five from both sides and then divide both sides by negative one and we, let, we are left with Q subscript B is equal to five minus P. So that's it, that's our individual demand curves in terms of the quantity variable. Okay, good. So let's substitute these two variables into our market demand equations here. I'll go back to the red color so it's not confusing. For this bottom part, let's substitute Q subscript M and Q subscript B. And we get Q, big Q is equal to 2 minus P over 5, that's Mark's demand curve, plus 5 minus P, that's Ben's demand. Can you guys see how I've just substituted in there? Opening up the bracket, we get 7 from the 5 and the 2, minus P on 5, minus P. Now, since we can only add or subtract fractions with common denominators, I'm going to rewrite this negative P in this equation as negative 5P on 5. This is equivalent to the negative P since negative 5 divided by 5 is just equal to negative 1. So if we do that, we get 7 minus 6P on 5, and that's only if the price is less than or equal to 5. For this top part, since market demand is just equal to Mark's demand curve, big Q is equal to Q subscript M, and Q subscript M is 2 minus P on 5, then clearly big Q is just equal to 2 minus P on 5, but that's only if prices are greater than 5. And that's it, that's the algebra for our market demand. So super well done everyone, good job. Uh, just before I go, there's one thing that I would like to emphasize, and that is that it's essential that we are 
add in the queues, when we add the demand curves, they have to be in terms of the quantity variable. If we had left it in terms of P and then added them up as they were, we would have been doing something called vertical summation. And that's very different from horizontal summation. Okay, super well done, everyone. I hope you guys are enjoying studying economics. I hope the video has helped. Please check out my uh, channel. Please like and subscribe. Give me a comment below. Let me know uh, if you would want, like me to make a video on anything in particular. Most of all, I hope you guys are having a really great uh, day or night. Cheers.